Members messing around in the playroom for iToy's third title. The back of the game manual had various images to scan with your camera, one of which showed an advertisement for iToy Kinetic. Released in 2005 in collaboration with Nike Motion Works, Sony's London studio of weird and wonderful video game peripherals presented a personal trainer in the form of a video game for you to train at home. No memberships, no public humiliation, and no lads having a perv on you. I hate when that happens! As a big fan of the iToy games growing up, I decided to start my journey towards Herculean God in familiar territory with one of my favourite gaming concepts of all time. The game boasts a highly personalised workout program based on a holistic approach to exercise. So, as someone who loathes working out, this is a dream come true. Play video games and get fit at the same time. If it's going to make me look like the models on the cover, then I'm in. But as we know, iToy traditionally only focuses on upper body movement, mainly in the flailing limbs department. So how is it even possible to get a full body workout? With this, packaged with the game comes the full vision lens, a peripheral for the peripheral. How do you like that? The use of this lens allows your iToy USB camera to get a much wider point of view on the room. Maybe not the best method for self-conscious people trying to exercise, but it is a neat idea. With this add-on, we can now use our entire body to interact with the game, meaning you'll need plenty of space in the room to bounce about in. I've actually tried this with normal eye toy and... I mean, it works for some games, but you have to banana split just to reach certain items, as the games weren't built with this in mind. God, any excuse I can find to procrastinate over this thing. Well, we've been introduced to the full vision lens, so now we can officially begin. The game is hosted by two trainers who introduce us to the virtual facility we'll be held captive in for the next 12 weeks. All of the activities are divided into four categories, cardio, combat, toning, and mind and body. We have the option to play these at our own leisure, but I'll be spending my time in the personal trainer mode, because that's why we're here. Before we get to play, the game takes all of our information, including age, height, weight, length, and asks you various questions about your physical experience to help find a starting point. There is a lot of explanation and waiting around, but luckily, it's just this once. So, each day, we're presented with various game modes to complete, along with various optional activities if you wish. A normal session without extra activities takes on average 40 to 60 minutes, and for the first month of training, I'll be doing three sessions per week. Increase to four in the second month, and finally five in the third month, which is good, as I have time to ease this into my schedule and gradually increase the pace. Before and after each workout, we're given the option to stretch and warm up the body. We simply copy what we see our trainer do up on screen and they provide tips on how to stretch correctly. This is an important part of preparing the body to help avoid injury, so why it's optional, I don't know. In 12 weeks, I didn't skip a single one. One of the big things I'll be looking at for these videos is how entertaining and enjoyable the various games make exercising for myself personally, and Kinetic is already off to a bad start. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Fucking Wii Fit. You're ruining this for me! The warm-up is the same every single time. No variation. And trust me, you'll be sick of it after the first week. I got to the point where I started doing my own thing, mostly because I can't do some of the stretches thanks to my bad legs, but also because I got bored of lying on the floor waiting for my prostate exam. 
From there, we move on to our auto-generated workout of the day, spanning the various types of activities, each with four different modes. Cardio is probably my favourite of the bunch, and rounds last 10 minutes. It doesn't sound like it, but that is a really long time in the moment, especially when you get blown up doing the fucking warm-up. These sessions are so intense that I had to learn how to pace myself correctly, which is a really important factor in getting the most out of this. So, 10 minutes of cardio generally consists of hitting and avoiding items as they move across the screen, along with two different dance and rhythm games. These are certainly the most fun, and I actually found myself looking forward to these each week. Look at how much fun I'm having! The concept is just slightly hilarious, but hey, whatever works. Since you can use your legs to hit items, I tried to stay on my toes and actually move around, doing as many kicks as possible. I can do this without affecting my legs surprisingly. They just don't seem to wear down keeping on my toes kicking and naturally align themselves correctly. For me, that is a massive win. Unfortunately, not all of the modes are like this. Now, going through the list of things to do in this game, you'd think combat would be the most enjoyable, right? Well, trust me, the entire thing is a fucking disaster. I'll start off by pointing out, I'm not sure if it's the full vision lens or the game itself, but it's extremely fussy and inconsistent with how much light the camera needs. Obviously, I'm already taking time out of my day to do this because the camera doesn't work in darkness. But often, I've found myself having to shut curtains for combat games and still, they would not react correctly. Either they were overly sensitive, meaning I could do nothing and still score points, while other times I was overworking my body to its breaking point and still getting no results. If I'm going to try and incorporate this into my everyday routine, I need to know that I'm going to get what it's selling me. Aside from that, the combat games are designed to be shorter but a much faster pace for your body. They're fine, but I had so much trouble that I loathe seeing them on my roster. Finally, Mind and Body is more of a relaxation mind game type deal involving some memory games and activities based on specific motion. Again, very fussy with the light, so sometimes they worked flawlessly and other times I actually found myself quitting early, meaning I fail the challenge. The scores you earn from each game give you a rank on your performance and then an average overall. The game keeps track of this for you so that you can see how you're doing. This is good, but it raises more problems overall. The system can be cheated, very easily in fact. Now I never did this aside from the few times the overly sensitive game played itself, because what's the point, but from the very beginning I was maxing out my score. When you do this, the game isn't made any harder, so you've got no room to improve. Only when you complete a full month of training does the game re-evaluate your performance and change difficulty settings, meaning I went right to hard and had to adjust to more intense workouts overnight. But as soon as I mastered them, I hit the ceiling. Again. So for the final six weeks, I wasn't able to get any better. That, in my opinion, is a massive problem, especially since the game's auto-tune system is also kind of broken. If you do really well at a game mode, it rarely shows up, and if you do poorly, you'll be asked to repeat it again and again. Keep in mind, there are only four variations of each zone, Please excuse this rough correction, but uh, it's just come to my attention that the combat zone actually has eight variations. Fucking eight for the most faulty, broken zone. For some fuck all reason. So getting the same thing each week is so repetitive and so boring, because the only reason I suck at it in the first place is because my room isn't lit correctly. I went 10 weeks, not even knowing this combat minigame even existed, because it was never presented to me. And I did find out later that you can simply generate a list of activities for each session if you don't like what's offered, so... In what way is this game a personal trainer? After you complete your required tasks, or quit out of them because it's just fucking broken, you have the option to do either a toning or meditation session. Why? 
Why is this optional? By the time I get here, the few times I tried these, my body started to react negatively because I'd been pushing it too hard. So my natural reaction was to skip over these. I don't have the spare time anyway. These should have been included with the primary sessions, like so. Hi Jack, today we'll be focusing on your abdomen. You've got a cardio activity that involves a lot of bending over, a combat session that encourages kicking, and then a toning game to really target that area. The game doesn't do this, and I really think it should. So out of the box, I'm only required to complete 75% of the entire experience on repeat for 12 weeks, with almost no variation and inconsistent results despite identical efforts? <sighs> the workouts are good and do work wonders. Even after the first few weeks, I could feel the fat starting to drop off of my stomach. But if the sun is so much as hidden behind a single cloud, I'm a fish out of water. I can't play. Great. There were also days that I missed sessions. Out of the 46 workouts, I missed 7 during my time trying this. Some of those are the result of a busy schedule, and others are me not giving a fuck because I kicked my toe and spilt water everywhere the day before. However, I rarely half-assed a workout and the days I missed, my physical activity was normally compensated anyway, so for a beginner just starting this routine, I think I made a solid effort. But as for the game itself, it's honestly a mixed bag. It did at times make me excited to exercise with the more enjoyable modes, but the terribly fussy game and false personalised training is a massive letdown. iToy Kinetic gets 5 out of 10. I can't say it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, because it does. Playing this for three months, I started to shed some body fat, but didn't see much change in the weight department, even with less snack eating in my downtime. I'd say in a controlled environment, this could be a solid option for anyone, but at home, as its intended use, it's not ideal. Having said that, however, during this time, I did not feel sick once, so that's a massive win in my book. Now before I call it an episode, let me quickly talk about a spin-off title known as iToy Kinetic Combat. An entire game based on the faultiest zone? This should be amazing! The idea here is actually a little different. Opposed to being a personal trainer, this is more like a compact kung fu instructor, and it does improve in some areas. Warm-ups and cool-down sessions are now required as far as I can tell, and even though they're repetitive, they do alternate between different stretches each day. The modes themselves are now based on classic combat forms, Dragon, Tiger, Mantis and Phoenix, as it teaches you stances, strikes, defences and movement techniques for each of these fighting styles. That's actually a really cool idea, and the motion detection has been drastically overhauled. The player is now layered with a silhouette showing correct motions, but wow is this thing fussy. It's made so precisely that I'm sure it works, but the player has to keep an eye on the TV screen, generally meaning your head or body is slightly out of position. This was always a problem with the previous game too, having to look at the screen. We're not in a virtual reality bubble yet, so until the items can materialise within the room, you've got to crank your neck to see the game. The other problem with kinetic combat is that there is a lot of standing around. There are still some fast paced modes, so much more enjoyable, that also work consistently and actually delve into the future technology of 2D fighting games, allowing you to actually fight an imaginary being within the room, such as a dragon. This game lets you kick a dragon in the fucking face, it's so cool. But, due to my legs, standing around is a massive killer for me. There are so many stance-oriented activities that I just can't bear the pain. I only made it through two sessions of this before I had to stop. I was doing damage to my legs, and I know this because majority of the time, a night's sleep will reset the pain back to zero. But that wasn't happening here. The pain continued for a day or two after, meaning that I couldn't walk too well. 
Based on what I have played though, it has improved in some areas and regardless, is more enjoyable to participate in. So, iToy Kinetic Combat gets 6 out of 10. There is a minor asterisk to that, however, as I'm not able to fully experience the game. And that just about does it for iToy Kinetic, a personal trainer that trains your body, trains your mind to be paranoid about lighting, and lets you fight imaginary friends within the safety of your own home. It's an interesting concept and possibly the first truly dedicated exercise tool combined with video games. But unfortunately, like all video games, it can be cheated and can also be very, very glitchy. So, now it's time for me to move on to the next chapter in this fitness journey, We Fit. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and share. I'm Square Eye Jack and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.